Today I want to kind of talk about something that you know I uh, have experienced in my own life. Um, I've always felt that whichever path I took in my life was always an accident. I, you know, you have your vision, you have a dream, you have your uh, hopes, your aspirations, but most of my life, most of my success, actually is a happy accident. I've never really thought I was going to end up where I am. I'm doing what I'm doing in my life, right? So I call them, you know, crumbs from the universe. So my talk is a little off the beaten track. It, it, it's, it's taken from my own experience in my own life. And hopefully that, you know, you will, after this talk, start looking at crumbs around you and see the magic that they hold and they unfold as you do your own journey in life. Um, how many of you know the story Hansel and Gretel? Yeah, Hansel and Gretel. So, you know, the story is about two kids, for those who don't know, who, whose mother died and the father remarried because he wanted someone to take care of his children. And the stepmother turned out to be, you know, like, like a witch almost. And she wanted to dispose of these two kids, so she convinces the father to drop them off in a forest. The previous night, they are twins and the sister hears it as they are discussing this in the kitchen. And so, she quietly goes after everyone sleeps and takes a big loaf of bread and hides it. And next morning, as they go into the forest, she drops off pieces of this bread along the way, hoping that they can find their way back home. Okay? And we all know what happened because the animals and the birds ate up the bread and after the father left them in the jungle, they were lost. Right? I my belief is most of us want these bre secure, secure bread crumbs that we leave or we take up as we journey through life and we kind of miss out on the magical crumbs that the universe throws at us. I, I think there are lots of lots of crumbs that appear in front of us in many ways, in many disguises and uh, if we learn to pick up those crumbs, those crumbs might take you to a magical place. Sometimes, sometimes you'll fall and you'll hurt yourself and you'll bleed and you'll regret why you picked up that crumb. But those crumbs also are valuable because they teach you a lesson and hopefully you'll never do that again, right? So, like I said, they come in many disguises. Um, they're like invisible signposts. You know, we are stuck in life most of the times. You know, you're, you're always struggling. You want to do something with yourself. You know that you're worth much more than what you are, most of the time. You've got gifts that you don't know how to use. You've got opportunities you don't know how to capitalize. You know people you don't know how to leverage. And you're stuck. And I find in my own life, whenever I was stuck, whenever I things were the hardest in my life, I always found a crumb and I picked it up, not knowing where it's going to take me. I, know, I don't know where it's going to take me. But I pick it up and suddenly... I'm off to a strange place, right? Some place that I've never imagined. You know, one of the words in the English language that I love is this word called serendipity. And it's a beautiful word, right? And uh, I mean, I don't know if you can read this or not, but basically serendipity is, you know, landing up with a fortune, fortune is movement, landing up with magic in your life at a time when you're least looking for it. Right? And if you can kind of somehow cling on to these moments in your life that kind of appear out of nowhere, they will lead you to places of magic. Right? And like I said, these crumbs come disguised in many ways. They are like magic cookies. They sit in front of you. They look very appetizing. You pick them up and they take you to a different place. I remember when I, you know, I, I studied abroad. Uh, lived in San Francisco for almost 14 years before I came back to India. I never imagined I'd be a music director. Okay, that was never in in my scheme of things in my life. I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to cut an album in the U.S., which I did. And 
I never thought I, I was going to end up doing music for Telugu films. You know, before I came back to India, I never even watched that many Telugu films. Telugu was my second language. I couldn't even, I don't even speak Telugu well, very well. But I'm glad I took it as a second language because now I sing with, sit with singers and lyric writers and I can read it and, 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 and go through songs. But, you know, coming back, when I did music, I came back to India after 14 years to run a large company called Sybase. It's a database company and I ran the Southeast Asian operations. So when I came back, I went to the US primarily because I wanted to be a rock star, like I said, and make an album. So I made an album in the US called In Search of a Soul. And uh, I was nobody, right? So I came back to India. They deployed me in India for three months to build Sybase, uh, Southeast Asia. And um, so I had this album that I finished in San Francisco. And I was sitting, uh, I used to travel almost every day because I had so many countries I had to run. And I used to come back home tired and sit before the TV and watch MTV. Because India was just happening, pop, pop, pop was happening in India and lots of music was happening. Shankar Mahadev and Lucky Ali and Alicia, all these great singers were, were on TV. And uh, the reason I'm telling you this story is, a crumb is a flash of inspiration that happens to you. And many, many times you'll be sitting and say, I can do that. The truth is you can do that. But what do we do with the thought? We just said, we brush it away and get on with our lives, right? So anyway, I was sitting in front of the TV and suddenly I see uh, Shankar Devan's album, Shankar Mahadevan's album, he and uh, Hari Aran, Colonial Cousins, the album that came out and there was a song called Sarigama Padanisa, beautiful song. So I was sitting down suddenly the song came and I said, hey, I got a CD, I've done 12 songs, I think my album is great, why can't I make a video? And then my mind said, hey, you're a CEO of us of a software company, you got a job to do, you got a quota, 11 million dollars a year was what, what I needed to generate for Sybase. That was my revenue quota, right? I had to run around every day, make sure every quarter make the numbers. And my mind said, you know, that's stupid. Why do you want to do a video? You already accomplished the goal of doing an album. So I went to bed. I woke up next morning, the thought didn't go out of my head. It's a crumb, it sticks. It's a flash of inspiration. I got up and I said, I'm going to do a video. Who's going to buy it? I don't know. Where is it going to go? I don't know. But I want to do it. It's a crumb. It came in front of me. Flash of inspiration. I'm going to pick it up. I picked it up. And uh, every time I went to Bombay, I used to look at all the record companies in Bombay and go from one record company to another and start to pitch my album. So, you know, I'm a musician. You know, here's my album. Can you listen to it? And of course, everybody said, get out. But no one wanted to listen to me. So I said, change of strategy. I said, let me not introduce myself as a musician. Let me introduce myself as a managing director of Sybase when I go into this company. I wore my suit. I didn't show them my album. I went to the... And every time, this is something that you guys should recognize. The most important person in any organization. Who is the most important person? Can anyone guess? Yeah, very close. Receptionist. Very important. Be very nice to receptionist. So, you know, as a salesperson, I'm primarily a sales guy. I used to sell databases to large organizations. And every time you go into a company, the, the first person that greets you is the receptionist. And every time I walk in, I just always have at least one genuine nice thing to say to her or him. And I make sure they remember my name. The next time I come in, they'll call me Ramana. They know my name, right? So anyway, I, so every, I do the same thing. So I went into Sony and this receptionist was really glum. It was not having a good day. The previous time I went, I was wore my jeans and went. So I went back to Sony Records again. I'm in a suit. And she looked at me again, a little surprised. This guy is back. Because last time she didn't let me in. And uh, I said, I'm here to see your managing director. She said, what for? Because the previous week I came in with a, with a CD. I said, I need to talk about databases and music. Oh, sir, uh, one minute. She went back in and see the, uh, you know, MD of Sony, Sony Records. And he immediately came out. The guy who would not even see my album. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Ramana, what can I do? I said, I'd like to talk to you about database and music. I think this is a huge opportunity for Sony music in India. And we should explore it. Yes, sir, please come in. So I entered this room, we sat down. And I said, hey, by the time, before we start on this album, do you have a, a video, 
a record player of it that you can just watch the video on. For sure. And before that, I made a video very silently. Right? But I got inspired by MTV and I, and I said, you know, if these guys can make a video, I can do it. So I watched about 4,000 videos, made notes, and I said, I want this kind of a shot, I like this kind of a girl, this kind of a moment, this kind of an ambience, and I created a storyboard completely out of my own because I was, I was so excited with my crumb that I delved into it. And I built a storyboard and I found a cinematographer. I went to models and they wanted six, seven lakhs, you know, to act in the video. I said, forget it. I went to a dance school and found four dancers, beautiful dancers. I told the dance teacher, I said, listen, I'm not a bad guy. They can come, you can come with their parents. We're going to shoot a video. It's a very decent video. It only takes two days. I arranged for a big bus. We found a nice spot in, in, uh, called Tibeni Sangama near Bangalore, where three rivers meet. And, uh, I said, bring your whole family. So all the girls bought their uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters, huge bus, and we all went off to this place. And, uh, I called a cinematographer and I shot the video. It took me two days. I had no knowledge about this. The reason I'm telling you this is, when you find a crumb and you pick it up, it gives you the power to do whatever you want to do. You don't know, don't ask me where it comes from. It just comes. And everything falls into place. As long as you believe in what you're doing, right? So anyway, I finished the video in two days. So back to Sony Records. I give Caesar the video and I, and he says, he was looking at me funnily, you know, this guy comes to talk about databases. He's a managing director of a large company. He's giving me the CD. So I put it in and my song comes up. It's the first song in the album that's made in the video. He said, nah. he said uh, I said, just look at my song and tell me what you think of it. So he, he got into the song, he listened to it, and he said, hey, that's you in the video. I said, yeah. It's me. So he looked, 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 and he started looking at me funnily, you know. He knew, he knew I pulled a long one for him. So, and after the song, he said, man, this is a great song. I said, yeah, that's why I came to you. He said, not daily basis? I said, no. I came to you showing my video. What do you think? He says, it's a great song. I said, do you think you can market it for me? He said, no, you know, you have to be a Sony artist. See, in life, you know, always, you'll always get no's, you'll always get roadblocks, you'll always get people saying you can't do it. You'll always say, people saying, you know, you're not called for the job. It's not your job. Somebody else should do it. But if you believe in what you're doing, if you pick up that magic crumb, you will have answers. So I said, you know, listen, see the, I understand I'm, I don't look like a rock star. I understand I'm not a Sony artist, but what if I printed 25,000 tapes? At that time, tape, tapes were happening and maybe made a, a thousand CDs at my cost. I give it to you. Would you wrap a Sony sticker around it and put it in a retail store? He thought about it for a minute. He said, eh, yeah, I think we can do that. But you want you want to finance this the production? I said, yeah. Twenty five thousand tapes. He said, what if we don't sell? I said, then I picked up a bad crumb. It's okay. At least I, I did what I wanted to do. He said, fine. He called up his legal people. In half a day, we made sign an agreement that they were going to be my distributors. Right? So we made twenty five thousand tapes and a thousand CDs, and we put it out into the market. Guess what? It went to number one on channel V, channel Z, ETV. It's all over the place. The first the song went went to the top of the charts. They sold a hundred thousand tapes and almost fifty thousand CDs. At that point, it was huge. So then I ended up meeting interviews with Lucky Ali, Shankar Mahadev, and all these guys were in the same room. We were taking photographs, and it was on. It's a magic crumb, right? And uh, I believe that if I didn't that day watch that video on TV and get that flash of inspiration, I wouldn't have done it, right? So then I did that and when I was running Sybase, and a lot of people used to come because we were a large company, we set up a shop in Bangalore and there was this one guy who worked in Oracle, Oracle was in the same uh, next building, we, were comp we compete with each other, database company. So this guy was one of the architects of the database, he really liked, you know, my music. So he used to come to my office and hang out with me. He said, I'm like, you know, you should start a company. I'm like, hmm. I'm, I've never started done a company before in my life. My father is a professor, same from Andhra University. He was an agriculture economist. Came from a very conservative family. Playing the guitar itself was a big deal, right? And now this guy comes and let's start a business. 
And at that, that time, almost I was three years, in, two years inside it, and in India. I was, I was supposed to come for three months, ended up staying for two years, and I knew I had to go back to the U.S. And uh, I said, I went back home, stuck in my head, another crumb. Let's start a company. I woke up next morning, I said, I'm quitting Cybex. This is it. I can't do this no anymore. I can't travel every day. I'm tired. It's a great job. You know, paid a lot of money. I was an expat living in a penthouse in Bangalore. You know, I was flying first class anywhere in the world. Great bonus, lots of money. Next morning, I didn't want it. It stuck in my head. I picked up that crumb. And I started a company called Liquid Crystal. The moment I picked it up, we got funded by, you know, the same guy who funded Coffee Day, a guy called Siddharth. GTV put in about a million dollars and I raised another three million dollars. And we started Liquid Crystal. Three years later, the internet bubble burst and unfortunately we couldn't take it anywhere. Right? So at that point I decided, and that time people started calling me from Hyderabad, the producers, and come and do a movie, come and do a movie. I said I've never done movies before. But that picked up another crumb. And I left it. And I'm a, the most frustrated person with me picking up crumbs is my wife. Because every day I come up with a new crumb and I said, maybe. But you know, the, the trick is you don't pick up crumbs because you, you want to go somewhere. You pick up a crumb because it moves you. You pick up a crumb because it's something that's not normal. It's something that happens to you. You know, you, you get into a moment where you say, you know, I have to do this. So anyway, I've got about one and a half minutes left, so I'm going to keep it really short. Um, to make a long story short, I came here to Hyderabad, picking up that crumb, I did 25 films, and after that I got bored with films. Because it's a non-creative job after some time. You do music, I'm a guy, you can't hold me down and say do this. I do the music that I love. The moment I cut, do something I don't love, music that doesn't come from my heart, I don't like it anymore. So I just said, let me take a break. At that point, and I, also, I was also doing consulting for companies because I, I have a lot of two decades of international experience in sales, marketing, strategy, business. So a lot of companies came to me and I was advising them how to set up shop, how to expand, how to set up sales channels, how to sell. And uh, so one guy came, comes to me and says, you know, I've got a solar company and uh, I've got these solar lights that I'm importing from China and I want you to build a website and give me a strategy. I said, okay, give me a light, let me look at it. He gave me a light, I went back home and I looked at it, it was junk. And this guy was selling 100,000, 200,000, half a million of these lights to four people. And I said, next morning I got up and I said, hey, you know, I can give you a strategy, but what you're selling to this country is junk. And anyway, to make a long story short, I decided to start my own energy company after that. So I have a company called Earth and Glow now. We light up villages in India with solar and, and LEDs, and I've lit up 20 villages in Manipur, like, lighting up five. Another crumb, right? 